Hi, welcome. I'm going to get started because I've got one o'clock on my, my clock here. Uh, my name is Deb Quintel. I'm the Director of Curriculum Development with Cali and also their in-house counsel. I've never given a presentation before government approved safety blocks here. If you try and charge me, I am protected. It's electronic fields. This is, I'm not sure if I should be playing like chess or dice on these or, or what. So, uh, it's, it's kind of, these are kind of intriguing. They look solid. I, I am very fortunate to be joined in my presentation by uh, Joe Groman, who's a professor at Nova Southeastern, and Marjorie McDermott, who's a professor at uh, West Virginia, is going to be chiming in also. And I don't see anyone else in the room um, specifically uh, who I wanted to have chime in, but anyone is welcome to chime in. Uh, my apologies to Joe for not being listed on the paper version. I somehow got him on the electronic version, but I'm not sure what happened when we converted to paper. Uh, we're talking about simulations. Many of you have probably seen Paul Mahard and Karen Barton and Michael Hughes and those folks from University of Strathclyde in Scotland speak on SIMPLE, which is their simulated professional learning environment software package. And I don't do anything as fancy as they do. Um, those folks are running entire courses, 14-week courses, on simulated learning through the SIMPLE software. And Cali's got a little bit of a different vision. And let me explain that vision and how uh, we came to have our insight and things like that. So first of all, I've been running um, a couple screens up here that are the basis for the problem that I created just as a mock-up to walk us through some of the software here. Um, basically, we've got our country music star, Ricky Lee. And uh, Ricky Lee has a real exciting life. Um, his wife, Amber, is about to become his ex-wife. And, and Amber left him a breakup note which had um, just a few short lines uh, regarding her division of property. He got the Dodge truck, the friends at the bar. She was going to take their dream jar um, and her shattered heart. Um, and she wasn't spending another tomorrow with him today. Um, and that was pretty much all she said. And, and she left out. She left the house. Uh, and Ricky Lee then took this note and he wrote a hit song. It's gone number one on the country charts. I'm sure if John isn't playing Lady Gaga for you, he'll, he'll play it. Um, he's very fond of Lady Gaga. Um, so this is Amber's note. Um, and Ricky Lee wrote this song. So now the next step is that Ricky Lee's, or Amber's attorney, who really handles family law and divorce, has sent Ricky Lee a note saying, wow, we couldn't be happier that you used Amber's note in the song. We're a co-author under copyright <laughs> law, uh, and we'd like some of the royalties. Um, and uh, the, the attorney is Danny Ronaldo. I've been watching a lot of World Cup soccer. <laughs> and, and, uh, so, so it's quite questionable that Danny doesn't have a solid foundation in copyright law, because I think Danny's missed an issue. So then the fourth party here is our attorney. This is the letter from Danny. Um, where they're sharing their glee about Dream Jar hitting number one on the chart. Uh, and uh, the fourth note in this, in this simulation is a letter from the managing partner at the law firm. I just like to tidy up when I'm up here. This is <laughs> next to um, and this is the note. This is from Terry Boxer, the senior partner, and says, I was at Ricky Lee's concert. He handed me a letter from Danny Ronaldo. What do you think? Is Amber a joint author? Any other issues we should worry about for Ricky Lee? Send me a letter that I can forward to Ricky Lee with the answer. So these four documents are the basis for the, the simulation I created here that I want to talk about. And basically, what we're doing here at Cali is thinking of a different model. Let me move our notes off here. Hold on. Joe's lent me his fancy clicker, so I'm going to see if this works. Did you turn it on? Yeah, oh, did I turn it on? No. Slide up on <laughs> I, I slid it. Okay. <clears throat> cool. All right. 
Um, so let's let's back up. How many of you have seen a presentation at previous, I almost said future, at previous Cali conferences on simple? All right, a good number of you. Um, well, we're taking it a little different direction. Um, first of all, you can get the simple community so the simple software at the Strathclyde website, which is simplecommunity.org. If you have any trouble there, just let me know. Um, and the way simple works is you can, they refer to it as creating open or closed problems. And when I think of open or closed problems in this country, I think of the legal research world, and I think of whether or not you're giving the student all the material in a packet, or whether you're making them go do the research themselves. And I think they have a slightly different take on open and closed. Um, closed is you're providing a lot of the material, but mainly every path that the student can take has an ending to it, whereas open is you're giving them a problem and they can go absolutely anywhere. So, so their idea of closed is a little more open uh, than our idea. <coughs> you can use the, um, these simulations for transactional or litigation work, and assessment can be done by faculty members, practitioners who live in or out of town, former students, uh, yourself always, you're, you're always welcome to participate in your own class. Uh, and, and the neat thing, because it's taking place completely in an on online environment, is you can engage colleagues or former students who are not in your same time zone, in your same geographical area, who don't have the classroom availability. So you want to bring an expert in, but the expert can't come in at 1 to 2.30 on Tuesday afternoon when you have your class. You can bring them in through the software. All right. Um, so I think some of the benefits of simple, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Some, some of the benefits are a heightened sense of, sense of authenticity. Um, I used to teach, oops, now I've done it. <laughs> I used to teach uh, legal research and writing at Chicago Kent, and one of the conversations that I seem to always have with first years across my desk was I, could, I would have constructed this, this really what I was proud of, nifty hypothetical with all these characters and things. And the student would sit across from me and say, well, but what do you want is the end memo. And I said, well, it's not about me. It's, it's what the partner wants. Yeah, yeah, what do you want for the end memo? You know, and then they'd come to me, well, what do you think, you know, why is the client doing this? I said, well, let's ask the client. Well, you're the client. Stop this. You know, you, you, you are everything. Stop the shenanigans and just give me the answer. Uh, and, I, and I think this, the simple software gives an increased sense of authenticity that one person is not pulling all the strings in the real world. And in the real world, you do have other people you have to go to, other entities, and those people have their own schedules and you have to work on their schedule. You can't email people in the middle of the night and then be upset that they don't email you back right away, which I think sometimes is a tendency with students and professors. Um, again, it's this point of view um, in, in tone of voice, a POV is point of view. You can create really your own little, your own little play here if you want. Um, it allow, the system allows for emails to be sent and received, and they're actually coming from the partner or coming from the client or coming from whatever entity you're <laughs> created, as opposed to me saying, well, I've talked to the client, and this is what the client told me. And every single email reads from Deb Quintel, from Deb Quintel. The faculty are able to see absolutely everything. You can see the students working on a project. You can see things that they put in and didn't send to you. You can see their management of the issues. So there's a bit of a, a big brother going on. Um, and it also allows for material to be shared in um, a unique way that, that is called a resource. Basically, my belief is if I hand students an inch of papers and say, here's your problem, they're going to read from first sixteenth of an inch to the final sixteenth of an inch. They're going to read everything I hand them because they believe somewhere in that stack of papers is the answer. The answer is nowhere else but within those that inch of paper. If I hand them the material is part of a resource, it's more realistic to the way the world works. Things aren't just handed to you uh, from start to finish, but sometimes you have to go and find something, either on a website, you have to contact a governmental agency, you have to go to a particular company and see what their warranty policy was. And if I hand that all to the student up front, 
they kind of know, oh, this must be important, as opposed to the student thinking through, what else would I need to know? Where can I go? Um, here's some resources that are out there, and I'll look at them. And of course, um, it's as simple as email, because it basically is like using an email system. Students can work in teams or solo, and there's a lot of talk we know coming out of the ABA and all the learning committees on the benefits of, of team, lear team learning and collaboration. You can really set the problem to be unique for each team. So if I was going to divide the room roughly in three by the sections of, of chairing here, um, if this section, if I want to make sure they weren't cheating and using this section's material, I could have this section's plaintiff injury issue involve an 83-year-old woman who slips on a stair climber at the YMCA and breaks her left hip. This group could involve a 16-year-old gymnast who, who slips um, on the stairs of the YMCA and breaks a toe. And this group could involve someone completely different. So you're going to have slightly different issues going on, slightly different doctor experts, the whole thing. So yes, maybe the overall theme is kind of the same, um, people being injured at the Y. Uh, but you can have characters changing so it appears to the students that it's not worth talking across teams. Um, you can play, you as the faculty member can play all the roles in the simulation or you can get your pals to play different roles or you can have students play different roles. So I could have half the class being the plaintiffs for a poor 83 year old Y user and the other half representing the Y. Um, in this uh, issue. So what are we doing? Well, if you've, if you've seen the simple people, as I mentioned before, they, they do these massive simulations. They're really long. They run entire courses off of them. And that's fantastic. And it's really great. And we're, we're toning down a little bit for what our focus is. And what we've come up with is what we're calling a Friday afternoon simulation. Um, and the way we envision this is it's Friday afternoon and it's noontime and you launch a simulation and the thing is due back at four o'clock. And you can have everything set up so you really are off doing whatever you want to do on Friday afternoon while the students are working away to solve the client's problem in this short period of time. So it's more discreet um, issues. Our problem with Ricky Lee and Amber uh, it involves just a single thing, a single question. Anyone know copyright law here? Or, okay, a little bit. Um, there's a definition of joint author in the statute, so it involves looking at the definition, and it's more about writing the letter that you would write to the, the client um, and, and saying, uh, she's probably not a joint author, here are the reasons, maybe toss in a case. And then the, the more difficult question I gave out by the practicing or partner attorney was the are there any other issues that that ambiguous senior partner is there anything else we should worry about thing and that you could play with later in the simulation later in the course um, so we're we're trying to create a group of simulations that are going to be used by all faculty like our lessons are available to all faculty we want the simulations to be available to all faculty we're going to be hosting a server for simple so you don't have to work with your IT people, and since most of you are IT, IT people, you're thinking, oh, well, that sounds like half the fun. <laughs> so if you want to run your own servers, I'm sure Elmer would be happy to chat with you about that. Uh, but faculty sometimes have a fear of interacting with IT people. Um, and I don't know if it's because they prefer to interact at 2 a.m. and want results at 2.15, or if it's just some fear that they have. Um, and then we're also um, working with simulations to put their, working with faculty to put their simulations into simple. Um, and this is a limited time offer. I should have it like in font that fades into the background. Um, and my offer stands as long as I can keep up with things that people are giving me. Um, and at the point where I can no longer keep up with the workload of materials you're giving me, the offer ends. Okay. <laughs> So it's, it's a floating time zone because I don't know what sort of response. I'm getting some simulations in, but so far I'm not overwhelmed. Um, but I'm not going to, um, it, is, it is a limited time. Um, I did want to mention the Boulder project. Last year the Cali Conference was in Boulder, as many of you recall. 
Um, and we were very fortunate, Callie was very fortunate to gather together Joe and Marjorie and uh, three other faculty members who joined us basically while all of you were having breaks and seeing sessions. I had five faculty members locked in a conference room with me and Karen Barton and Michael Hughes from University of Strathclyde. And we were talking about simple from the broad picture to the minutiae aspect. We were talking about the pedagogy of it. And a lot came out of that meeting. And, and I don't know if you want to jump in now, Joe, or if you want to jump in later. What's your? Well, the part of what came out of it is that we were to go and design some of our own simulations. And some of us, like Marjorie and I, have already done simulations live anyway in a face-to-face -face setting. So what we tried to do then is take some of these settings and move them over to the um, platform. Here, Joe, you can come up behind my safety barriers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I thought this was an electronic wall. No, I, I shut it down for you. Uh, and part of what I'd recommend is, as you're doing this now with the Cali setup, is as with all of us who are sort of ambitious, we jump into these larger projects. So my attitude was, since I'm a transactional attorney, my students were going to go and do everything everyone would possibly ever do uh, in a real estate transaction. Well, of course, why not? That ought to take like a millennium. Uh, <laughs> uh, what seems to work now with this new, newer model is you can go ahead and have more discrete activities. The nice part about the discrete activities is then that takes this longer picture that I have and you can break it into the smaller components and let the students build on those smaller components. Another advantage to the setup that can uh, be developed out of the uh, simple platform is you could create your own city. It, it, there is that possibility of having that entire learning environment or, or professional environment that's there. And for each of us, as we do different things, we could be in the same city just talking to different people who would be there. In a real estate transaction, I might be working with a surveyor or a title examiner or a title insurance underwriter or something along those lines, whereas my partner could be out there litigating one of these issues that we might have regarding the quality of title that could be there or some other activities that are related to it. And I don't think we'd get Ricky Lee at this point because I'm sure he's not going to buy anything at this stage of the game uh, because of the lawsuit against him. But the reality of it is that you can really gain an awful lot from this because it gives you a chance then to see what your students are doing and then measure their activity and assess their activity in these smaller bites that you have. So I think that's a good positive way to go ahead and use this newer model that we have here. Plus you have somebody with Deb's expertise who's far more technically savvy uh, than I am. Uh, which is easy to do. But um, I mean, part of my other role here is to let you see that there is life is a simple tin of training. Uh, that those of us who are working with simple really do have uh, a viable life out there. It's just that they did lock us up for an entire week. Have <laughs> 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 yeah, you moving to the other side? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Up. Your screen froze. Where did you turn it off? I don't think I turned it off. It still says on. Uh, all right, move forward the old way. Looks like the screen froze. Just try your down arrow. My down arrow? On your computer. Or next page. Uh, down arrow is it working? Uh, next page. Or page down or whatever. Uh, page down, thank you for converting. Okay. Uh, no. Try escape in Hindu. Oh, there you are, bottom left hand corner. Oh, there you go, down to the bottom. It's faded in the bottom left hand corner. Your cursor is right above it right now. <laughs> go back to your computer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get a chance to get even with her yeah. after all this time. I'm going to talk you through it. She always talks me through the lessons on the phone, so this works out very well. Farther left, farther left. You're in the neighborhood. Oh, is that just, oh, that's the background screen. That's right. That's not on the well, that's not on the lead one. Uh, see, I, I want to be on this screen here, folks. Oh, can't you just scroll down? Is oh, kind of really see the little arrow? Yeah. I, there you go, this one. might be the disadvantage of running two monitors. Oh, this is on the other screen. Okay. Hey, All right. Uh, Apparently, you have to like really press the button. All right. So, um, we're not going to talk about how the software works and how you open up the software 
and you click here and you do this in the software because we're moving to this different model. We're moving to the model where Cali is doing this for you. And any of you folks out there who want to be, um, like I'm working on a project with Debbie for a faculty member at Chicago Kent, uh, where the two of us are working together to create a simulation using uh, an existing paper simulation the professor runs. So any of you who want to do something like that and you want training in the actual software, contact me and we can set up an online training. But generally, here's what you need to do. We're talking more about the what you need to do to create this. Um, so we've got this um, template that I came up with. And I borrowed heavily, obviously, from uh, anyone I've ever known in my life. Uh, <laughs> and I'm very, giving very broad attributions. Um, and specifically, Paul Mahard, Karen Barton, and Michael Hughes, and then this entire team in the Netherlands who came up with a 30-page questionnaire to write a simulation, which I read and I thought, whoa, um, that's a lot. Um, so I put it to eight pages because I figured I only need eight pages of information to move you into a simulation, so we'll see how that works. Uh, so here's the big picture. You have to ask your faculty member, and I'm going to post my questionnaire that I've come up with um, onto the session wiki or whatever the conference <laughs> thing is. Um, so the course is copyright. You have to figure out what point in the semester you want this to go into. And I figured it would be about week four or five in a 14-week semester. That's probably when students would have covered this in class because I want them to have covered it before they work this material through. This is something the faculty member would have to provide you with so you could work with them on creating a simulation or getting me <coughs> the material for it. Are the, are the students working in teams? How many teams? How are the teams being picked? All that stuff has to be cited, be decided. What sort of knowledge? Well, I figured the student has to know who's entitled to copyright protection or what's entitled to copyright protection, whether Amber's note is sufficiently um, entitled to protection, uh, who's an author, and then later in the semester we could get into um, uh, infringement stuff. So I, I need a lot of backstory, both in my life and in my simulations. <laughs> Um, so what are the, what's the backstory here? Well, I really needed to know what the sequence was because understanding the sequence helped me develop the simulation. Whereas I think a lot of times you can walk into the classroom, sort of have a rough idea of where you're going with the material and whether you cover it in order A or order B doesn't really matter because you're covering the material. A simulation in this software really has to be uh, pre-directed uh, and you need a, a solid grounding in what the dimensions are. So I, personally, I needed to, to understand Ricky and Amber's life before the, I could have them breaking up and, and having this hit song. So that, that, that just helped me as the faculty member writing the simulation so that I got my story straight. Um, what's the end result? And I could have gone a lot of different ways with the end result. And actually, figuring out my end result was the most difficult task for me and I finally just yelled at myself and said, you have to do a decision because you need to do a PowerPoint slide stating that decision. Uh, and that inspired me to come to a conclusion. Uh, I, I could have gone with having um, Ricky Lee get the note directly from the young associate, which would be a different writing tone that you'd want to have your students do if they're writing directly to a client versus they're writing to a partner. I could have had them go to Ricky Lee as the client to ask questions, um, but I, I sort of streamlined it to have everything feed through the partner. Uh, and then I wanted to have how long the simulation would run. And I'm probably overly generous with saying four hours. The student can probably do this in half that time. Um, and I am providing them all the information, um, and I, I wanted to have sort of an issue created so I stayed focused um, on what my problem was. <coughs> so I wanted to come up with a list of learning objectives so that I knew why I was creating this simulation, not just because the software is out there, um, which sounds very Star Trek-like, but I wanted to know what, what are the benefits to the actual students um, and what are they going to be, what sort of resources will they have to look at, what are they going to be gaining? And I think that's a good question to have with your faculty member of why are they assigning this. Um, and then assessment, um, I put down here, is there an assessment rubric? And of course, it would be best to create one, um, which I did not do for this. 
Um, you could have self-assessment by the student. I didn't build that channel in. You could have the students assessing each other. I didn't build that in. Um, and basically, I envisioned this as a writing assignment that would maybe be a one extra point on their final grade sort of thing. It's more a you did it or you didn't do it, not a significant segment of the grade. So then I needed to come up with a list of characters for this because everyone had to be accounted for in the simulation as to where they were in the story at any time and are, do they have what I was thinking of as a speaking role? Will they ever interact with a student? So Ricky Lee um, has interacted with our, student, <coughs> with our senior partner. Um, Amber's attorney has interacted with Ricky Lee, could interact with you as the opposing client. I actually set the problem up so the student could email Danny Ronaldo for any information. Um, and then Amber, the soon-to-be ex-wife. You have to figure out who is the assignment coming from. How is this problem getting to the student? Um, how are you going to present the material? You can put things in simple in pictures. You can include um, audio files, video. So I could have had this left as a phone message because uh, I personally love those panicked client uh, <laughs> phone calls that you would walk in and get on Monday mornings. Those I just found really interesting. Uh, and then um, who, who is the client? You can do a lot of stuff with putting up um, temperament and point of view so that students get used to dealing with someone who isn't um, as rational and sane and polite as you are always. Um, <laughs> And then you, you need to figure out, uh, does the character speak? Does the character interact with the student? And this was the grid that I've created so that you list out all the characters, and then you figure out, does the character ever reply to the student? And I could have made Danny reply to the student, uh, but I just, because this is a Friday afternoon um, problem, I just wanted it to be very short. The student is allowed to email Danny, and if Danny Ronaldo is emailed, then I as the faculty member would see this because I'm all-knowing in the simulation. And then I could respond sort of either from the senior partner with a, oh, I forgot one thing, don't ever email opposing counsel without talking to me first. Or I could come back as opposing counsel and, and sort of say, oh, this is interesting, you're contacting me, you know, let's move this forward. So I can have a lot of fun. And then any characteristics the character must have, this is if we were going to do variables. And if your whole problem is set up with uh, female pronouns, it, it would probably be best if all the characters were female uh, so that we didn't have that little mix and match going on. <clears throat> you can set up locations. Uh, Joe's dealing with um, housing, um, a real estate issue. Um, so you could set up an entire community uh, if it involved a bad perm and a hair salon, you might want to put the location of the hair salon up. Um, the only thing I added here was Ricky Lee Roberts lives in Illinois, because so I wanted to avoid community property. And I, I just didn't know that Illinois doesn't have such a creature. Um, and then you need a resource list of everything that you're going to provide to the student. You need to know every document before you create the simulation It's going to be part of this. And that's either material that is handed to the student as a resource and is there at the beginning of the simulation, or it's material that you're going to feed to them at some trigger point in the simulation. So I've got um, Danny's letter, um, and as I, I, I noted here, do I need to create this? Because I sort of made this in, in segments. It's like first here are all the documents on the far left that I would need. And then as I made each document, I would note that it was made so that I could tick it off my list. Um, so I've got a note from Ricky Lee to the law firm. I've got a letter from Danny. Um, I've got Amber's handwritten note. Um, I had to account for Amber somehow keeping a copy of it so that Danny just, or so that Ricky Lee just can't be a, a big fat liar and say uh, she did not write that. And I didn't want it to get into a battle of she said, he said. So in the back story, if, anyone, if any of the students ask, um, Amber first journaled about her um, note to Ricky Lee. She's a very organized woman, and before writing a real breakup note, would draft out several versions. <laughs> um, 
And uh, then, then, of course, uh, I had to write an entire song for Ricky Lee. Um, um, I'm not really a songwriter, but um, I'm taking this to Nashville in a few weeks because it's awesome. <laughs> uh, and then I had to give them material. Um, and I want to give them a link to the uh, LII site where they can get the copyright statute. And I believe I linked them uh, just to the definition section rather than the entire statute section. So that was a favor I felt I did for the students. Um, any other documents that you have to create? Um, these are the backstory things. One I wanted to do was create Wiki, Ricky Lee's website um, because I thought, who doesn't have a, a website as a rock star or even a country music star? Uh, and I thought it would be cool if the student had to go visit the website and pull the lyrics for Dream Jar off the website. But that probably entailed me writing an entire album for the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a lot of broken links, and I just wasn't up to it this week, sorry. Um, so his album is forthcoming. <laughs> uh, but these are other things that you'd have to create. And then you need the sequence of events. And the, the simulation really starts at this green bar, this first long horizontal. Uh, but I needed to give myself a running start into the material so that I knew what had happened beforehand as to why the problem was happening in the simulation. So really, we've got Amber at some point contacting her letter, which would trigger Danny Ronaldo writing the letter to Ricky Lee. Ricky Lee gets this letter, um, or to your law firm. Obviously, I was playing with my facts here back and forth. Um, and then the partner emails the student with the assignment, and that's when the stimu simulation starts. This is high noon on Friday. The student does this amorphous research tries to figure out the answer. Um, and you could have the student emailing Ricky Lee. You could have the student emailing the, the law firm partner with questions. This is sort of a bit of a fuzzy area. But basically, the student eventually is going to respond with the answer, which is a letter that the senior partner can send off. And I wanted the student to have a little bit of room to have some iterations in here um, and, and fuzziness. Uh, and in this version, I would be sort of sitting there monitoring the simulation uh, to see what's going on. Or my TA could sit and monitor it because this isn't a high-end problem, really. High-end in terms of complexity. A couple other things you can include. You can include outside parties. I could link to the US copyright site if I wanted to. The students can really go to that site. I can also create a copyright employee that the students are allowed to email, and that would be happening all inside the simple software so the students really aren't emailing someone sitting in DC or, or wherever that mystical place in Virginia is that they really sit. Um, but it looks like they're talking to someone uh, in a governmental agency. So you can create all these extra parties. Uh, this is the Arcolic map originally. Um, Cali has taken it over. It's Caliton now. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can put all of your <laughs> businesses and things on these different locations. The benefit is in, in a problem like um, a, a real estate closing, maybe right opposite Joe's beautiful house, maybe we want to put um, a, a dump site or something that might um, lower the value, um, some, something like that. So you can give students a sense, again, of the reality of the problem and the sense that they need to look beyond what's assigned to them sometimes to figure out the answer. Uh, this is a website um, that, that we envision creating. Uh, this would be like Ricky Lee's website. Again, this is happening all inside of Simple. It's really not sitting out there on a unique URL, such as Cali sits on a un unique URL. Um, and then the cool thing is you get this list of directory of all the players in the problem, um, which I think is a great enticement to students to reach out and communicate with strangers that maybe they shouldn't be talking to um, <laughs> at different points. So, so you can just create a, a wide cast of characters. You can create other people at the law firm, and they all are you. So I could have a character that's called um, Jim at bp.com, um, and we're not really e emailing Jim at bp.com. We're really emailing Deb, playing the exciting role of Jim at BP within the simulated software. 
So you can create all sorts of authority figures and, and, and things like that. You, you really are creating a, 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 a play, a movie. So this is what the faculty view of the software looks like. Um, and it's really quite simple, no pun intended. Uh, it, it's straightforward. It, it's hard to see here in this light, but basically um, these are staff activities, these are player activities, and the player is the student. Uh, and then you've got things that are going on here, such as answering email, um, and then you've got your sent received email, and down here you've got uh, your resources for the student. So each simulation that you set up, the faculty member would log into a specific simulation problem, and this is what they're seeing. And they can go in and read emails, and they can click on buttons to move documents out to students. So once it's set up for the faculty member, they go to a website, they click a button to launch the problem, and then it runs. Then the faculty member comes to the same website. Whoa, it made a big wind there. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Um, they, they come back to the website, and they can check their email to see if the student is sending them anything that they need to reply to. So everything is happening in this closed, safe environment for the faculty member to work in. And I say safe here in a non-scary for faculty. And, and it's also not coming into their regular email box. So they don't have to be sifting through their email for uh, the different uh, messages from students. Very easy to find. This is the student view. The student sees that they, that they have um, a access to a particular simulation. We also will help set up your faculty with the student, we'll populate it with the student names and assign students. This is a list of all the players that the student could um, email in a scenario. Uh, and then right here, um, this is the example of a faculty view launch. And it turns everything bright green to tell you, oh, you're Go, go, go with that simulation. Go forward and teach. Um, and where the green is stopped is it shows the timeline of where you are in the simulation. So you haven't reached this final part, which is this says um, student is working, basically. So that's the student working, and they haven't sent you anything else. Um, and then the faculty view here, um, there are different folders that you can access, and the writing is really hard to see on this screen. Um, but when I post this up, it'll be very, seen, uh, very easy to see. Um, clicking on sent as a faculty, uh, faculty member shows you what the student has sent to you. So everything's in one space, as I said. Um, students can get a document. This is the student side. And the student sees that they've gotten a document from you. They upload documents um, from, they work in Word. It's not a word processor built into this. So they work in Word or whatever their version of Word is, uh, Open Office, whatever, and then they um, upload this document into their drafts and then they can send it. So you can even have students accidentally um, sending things to the wrong people, which is always a learning opportunity. Um, the students, as I say, select the right character and they click send. So, you know, just as accidents happen with sending email, they can happen here. You can't, you can't set it up to have the student send to the wrong people. Um, and then the faculty member uh, is informed that they've gotten material because something appears in their sent box. They can then download and assess the document. Um, and then this is a different picture showing the same sort of thing. This sort of different assessment. Um, and these are all the resources that are available. The, URLs and documents that I put in. You can put in template forms. You want the student to have a mock letter to use. And everything's available. So as I say, it's a limited time offer here. Um, timeline unknown for when we're going to be um, helping you create the simulations. I will give one uh, caveat here that um, I'm here at the Cali conference obviously this week. And next week, um, I'm on a vacation with no email access, and then I come back and I go to AA11. So if you start sending me stuff right away, which would be really exciting, um, and you don't hear from me, that's why. So I'm envisioning like being back working on July 19th, um, so there might be some delay here. 
Um, feel free to call me. I'm the like three sons looking character there. Doesn't that look like three sons <laughs> with the toe going? It really does to me. Uh, that's our whole Cali staff, obviously. And um, this is a bibliography. Aside from uh, referencing Paul Mahar and his book and Karen Barton and the simplecommunity.org website, where they have an enormous number of documents, their user guide and their administrator guide are really, really effective if you want to try simple on your own. And they also have a demo server you can play with. It's hidden, sort of, I think. Um, it's under the word demo. Wasn't that where we found it eventually? <laughs> Um, in the upper right hand corner in really small Scottish font <laughs> in, and uh, they have the password hidden in there also somewhere but you can find it or or email me if you can't and then they have a lot of materials under their library which are all their resources on how to create a document these are two books that I have found over the years really helpful in working both with Cali authors Cali author software and now with simulations um, the first one is this book that came out in 1998. Um, it's really designed for the gaming world, um, and it's about writing interactive media, and it's, it's just a really cool book. Some chapters are um, completely over my head, but others are just fascinating about how you create continuity and, and you create a gaming environment, which in a way is what we're doing. And then the second book um, is a book I stumbled upon on how to improvise a full-length play and it has this cool thing called a story spine in it, um, which helped me create a lot of the backstory for this, which helped me figure out why this was happening and what the legal problem was, which really got me to the part of the simulation. Maybe that's just the way my head works. Um, but I really, the more I've worked with these simulations over the past year, I realize in a simulation you're really creating a full length play. You have a cast of characters, you have something bad happen, and it happens in some location. And if that's not a play, I don't know what is. Um, well, sometimes there's music in a play, okay. Um, which Ricky Lee wrote for us, how convenient. So uh, I just find that to be a really interesting book uh, to get your head around uh, creating a variety of characters. Since most faculty, the simulations they traditionally write are hypotheticals for exams, which tend to be extremely fact-dense um, and compressed time and you can really stretch the time out on these. So, uh, any questions, anything to interject, Marjorie, from your experiences or ideas? Yes. I think the, <clears throat> the piece you have to recognize is that if when you have them generate stuff, somebody's got to look at that. Right. So, this isn't automated, if, for those of you who do simulations, this isn't automated, in taking that piece out of the process. There's still faculty assessment is what you're saying. Right. right. And sometimes pre-assessment feedback. I mean, if they send you an email and the guy <coughs> of Ricky Lee, you got to say something to it. Right. Uh, now, some of that can be pre-programmed, but not a lot of it. So this is a way of delivering simulations without some of the role play over. You know, coaching a bunch of students to play the characters and that kind of thing. But it still has the assessment overhead. Um, and at least right now, I'm not seeing any way of getting the helm back. Yes? I have two questions. The first, is there a limit to the number of students that can be involved? And second, do you know that multiple tactics can all use the same solutions simultaneously giving feedback? Can you have multiple what logging in? Faculty. Oh, faculty. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. You could have multiple faculty. Uh, you could have um, a TA. Uh, you could have multiple people logging in and giving assessment. Right. And uh, there isn't a limit to the number of students. It, it might cap out at maybe. Uh, no, I don't think there's a limit. <clears throat> right. So you could do 100 students. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I would do a simulation with 100 students um, just because of what Marjorie mentioned with the assessment. That's why I was asking about the multiple faculty. Oh, yeah. At the university that I worked for last, they did a simulation with the entire first year student base, which was 120 students in some cases. And they had multiple people providing feedback, but it was one large role play, basically. Right, you could do that. Right. 
other yes Sue, hi. Did you say there was an example of this that we could show our faculty on the simple page, or will, will there be one on the Cali page? Um, uh, an actual simulation? Yeah, an is that what you're talking about? That they could look at, and so we could show our faculty. Right. If you if you email me their if you email me, um, then uh, I need their email name. Okay. And then I will add them into a user group for a simulation. Okay. And then they can see a simulation running. Okay. Yes. Hi, Brian. Hi. Well, uh, what would be useful, actually, if there's some layer that we can show people, sort of, you know, I don't know, some sort of chart, graph, whatever, which sort of lays out what is otherwise within the interactions, right? So that as, as we try to explain the fact that what the heck this is about, they don't necessarily have to go through the entire simulation. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of, I, it, you know, it's just some sort of compressed, View of what the heck is going on in the simulation, so they have an idea that I'm not thinking. Right, that would that would be. Um, I think this. Oops, upside down. Hold on. Okay, even like right. What's in that? Is that a PowerPoint or? This is a PowerPoint of screen grabs. Okay. Screen grabs of the simulation running off the site. The I kept having problem with servers going down, so I. Um, I'm running this off of the Scotland server, and they're very kind to let me run it off of it. And I kept having problems oh, two weeks ago with the server not being available, so I didn't want to get here and pull up a server that was giving one of those I'm not here messages. Because right. that's um, awkward. Uh, wait a minute. No, this is the screen I wanted to be at. Hold on. I got distracted. Uh, this is really the timeline of what's going on. Okay, great, great. This this is really this is the faculty view. This is the faculty view right. of a simulation launched. Right. Now, what I kind of find confusing, to be real honest, is these four boxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, this this box right here, you can you can eliminate this bottom line. So, if your faculty are queasy about looking at technology, I would eliminate this bottom line, and I would eliminate this top line. And the world really comes down to these two lines right here. Because this is the player, this is the student, right. and this is everybody else, which is you. Right. Um, and this is a redundancy in my mind. It says staff. Right. Well, I am the staff, so now I'm confused. You know, I mean, this is, these two boxes are confusing to me. And this says critical events. And that's basically the, that's the senior partner sending the memo to the student saying, Ricky Lee's got a problem. I like Ricky Lee, fix his problem for me. Right. Um, that's the critical event, which, which I think is overly dramatic in my opinion to have an entire line. But I think if you were running a 14 week semester, a, a 14 week simulation as they do in Scotland, there might be multiple events that happen. Um, but to boil it down simple for, for faculty, not that faculty need simple things. I'm not saying well, that, yeah. but let's make life easy. Um, it really comes down to what does the student do, what does the faculty member do, what's, what's the interplay of that. Right. And it's basically a conversation. If I send you a document as a student, right. you as the faculty member are going to do something back right. right, to move me along. So yeah, these are up there. So I, I, and another, well, I'm, I'm going to be one of the Ignite sessions tomorrow morning, and one of my ideas is that what I think would be useful is to have resources as they, you know, as you can see with them here, but resources that would exist in the law firm's file, right? That the, the, the risk of what one would do when they do research on a particular problem. And it seems to me that, particularly now with Westlaw Next and uh, Lexus Microsoft Office, that there's a lot of uh, potential for students to understand how those new search you know, uh, applications work, but nobody has a file, right? Law, law schools don't have law firm file, right? Right, and they don't, and students don't get exposed to a lot of things that you would otherwise want to go to in order, you know, as as a part of this process, as a part of learning. And so, um, it, you know, not that not that this is you know somehow not a big enough project that would take people decades to work on it all by themselves. But it, I think it would be interesting to, to, to conceive of the, you know, the law firm file room with all the resources that one would put in, then, then using the good search engines that now exist, Lexus and Westlaw, as, as a part of this whole package. I think it would be 
crazy day. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Um, Carol. We just saw a download uh, the Lexus uh, Microsoft um, Interplay. Yeah. And they have a, a SharePoint feature. Yeah. And that does that. It does this knowledge management. Well, I get that. The question is, what is where's the data? For the local, for the local, for the local farm. That's what I'm saying. Right. What happens is that you was, you can create um, a simulation and, and incorporate. Uh, so what happens in a real firm? They don't have file cabinets anymore. Right. They right. have databases right. and they're indexed. Right. And so um, you s put search terms in like I want. Uh, um, no, I, I, the problem is, does your law school have one of those? We use SharePoint. So now that we use SharePoint, right. and it oh, see, we, within the law school, right, right, as an intranet, right. And so now that we can, right. there's a way to access the power of SharePoint, Lexis, and create content, right, that could also bring them in. Yeah, but we have to create the content. That's the problem, right? So the actual stuff that would otherwise be in the problem. And what you're talking about the file room, you're talking about template documents. Yeah. You're talking about closed client files. Also, that's a bolt that go into you know, any right. A, a vast. Look at the yeah. order that we did in the Jones. What, case. Well, let me just go back. Right. What um, uh, Alexis is doing is allowing now you to have access without additional cost to some of their um, uh, uh, their content in the. <coughs> It's called court docs or something like yeah. that, right? Right. So that, some of that's our some that, No, that's right. Exactly right. And, that, and that's a whole new world, right? To send a student to uh, all the electronically filed documents in, at a courthouse. Right. Right. No, we never did that before. And it's also uh, um, transactional stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, kind of what Bloomberg does, right. you know, with um, uh, SEC stuff and all that. Right. But I think there's a deeper problem. Right. right. With respect to this, though, Deb, I think one of the things that would be interesting to the faculty to respond to this page again in the question regarding this is that as you work through the different timeline, um, you can have different stages of evaluation. So that the nice part is you can have five, six, seven, eight, however mobile um, evaluations you want for a whole stream of activity. And you may not permit it, you might have it so a student can't permit to move past a certain point until they really get that settled. Right. And so they establish that baseline and then move on and continue with more evaluations and the like. So that there's an advantage to this. But also what you're talking about with the shared documents, there are software programs out there now, depending upon the state that you're in, where they already have this done electronically. Uh, Prodoc has a couple of different systems um, where you're allowed to do that. And for Florida, for instance, they have a multiple uh, level, about 13 or 14 different groups in there, family law, real estate law, you know, a lot of the, the dissolution. A lot, of the a lot of the documents right. are already there. See, right. my intent with doing this was I would then have links over to that. Though they will permit our students to go in for that semester free of charge right. and utilize those electronically accessed materials. Yeah, and it's sitting there so that we give them the names at the beginning, they get this, this temporary permit, and my plan on this is then that that's what I'd give my students then is that link into there so they'd have that free access during that time. Right. And what was the name of the service? That's ProDoc. ProDoc. Yep. It's now by West. Right. It's now by West. They bought them out. Yep. Right. Any other questions or comments? Well, oh, yeah. You got a second? Yeah, I do. Um, when, when, I, when you were going through those various things, I was thinking of, uh, I guess it's Lexus's case map software. And their time now. Right. And so I have two questions. Number one, as I understand it, the biggest difference between that and this is that you have the timeline feature in this software, so that you can have trigger points. Somebody submits something, something comes back. Because uh, Case Map has all the elements that you were talking about, including the ability to lay out a timeline. So it 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 doesn't function as a simulation because the timeline is static. It's in case map. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Time map. But yeah, in case or map. time map, whatever. So uh, and so if that's correct, and I assume it is, uh, might it still be a tool that would be useful for the development of simulations? Because it, it gives you the ability to lay out characters, to add documents, to put a time time frame. Right. I've only played with um, time map once 
probably over a year ago on their whatever the day is time trial that you're allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I remember it being basically just I've created a timeline. But if what you, the really nice thing about time map is that you can take the stuff out of case map and create a timeline. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Case, so case map has these other attributes. Okay. So it, it might be a tool to for faculty to conceptualize to get you into this? Is that your idea, Wayne? And, and I guess I was wondering if, if you looked at it or if anybody here I haven't looked at it recently. As a, because it seems to me it won't work as a simulation tool, but it's got everything in. No, I, I think you put your finger on how it might be useful. Because it's not set up to generate what we're talking about here. But you certainly could use it to map out a, a mock. Case. Yeah, cause I, I just hand mapped it out using PowerPoint and, mm -hmm. and arrows, but that's just because that's what I had access to. But that sounds more efficient. Other thoughts, ideas, comments? Well, thank you all very much, and I do hope to hear from you. Can you open up your email address again? Oh, yeah. It's right behind her on the board. Oh, I wrote, I wrote it here. And also, if you go to the Cali website and click on About, then you'll find a staff listing. Or it's here. There it is. Is there information about that? Is there information about this on the Cali site now? Or is no. Okay. No, there's no information about Simple on the Cali website. Okay. Right. But it will be at a later time? Or that's probably a good idea, Sue. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's like, duh. Do we have a recording of those sections that all are? Yeah, um, there are. If you go on the Cali website for past conferences, you can find all of Paul Mahard's. His last name is M A H A R G. And you can find all of his past uh, discussions of it. And also the papers that uh, Patricia McKellar and Karen Barton and Paul Mahard wrote dealing with the process are really, really useful. I think running the uh, it's difficult to do.
I'm just giving it to him a resource, which is a teeny version of what uh, Brian Dowling was talking about. Of his, what was his word? His law.